The Ducati Multistrada V4S, one of the most desirable motorcycles on the planet. But what's it like to live with on a daily basis? Is a bike this big any good off-road? And how does it perform as a two-up tourer? ABR founder Alan has been riding it throughout 2022 to answer those questions and more as he gives it the ABR verdict. jump into the verdicts i just want to say a huge thank you to the good folks at lindstrands and halvarsons who have kindly sponsored this video uh, we've worked with those guys for, for a number of years now and well their gears always proved very reliable good looking and performed well well i think i first started wearing it about 12 years ago and yeah it's top-notch gear it's brilliant i don't think i've had a bad piece from them so uh, quite great that they work in with us on these videos thank you very much guys Yep, and you can check out uh, more of Lindstrands and Halvarsen's uh, gear lineup and everything I've got to offer through the link below this video. So, Alan, I can't think of many people better placed to give a verdict about this bike than yourself because not only have you been riding it throughout 2022, but am I right in thinking you've ridden pretty much every model of Multistrada ever made? Uh, you're right there, James. It's... Um it's a case of privilege, to be honest with you. You know, sort of owning the business, as you know, when the bikes, the long term is assorted every year, there's uh, not exactly a pack in order, but sometimes I put my mark down on it. And yes, I've been, I've been sort of ticking the multi uh I'd say for the last 10 years, really, on the long termers. And pretty much everyone they've put out in the modern era, I've ridden and quite extensively as well, yeah. So as someone who's who's ridden and appreciated so many Multistradas, what for you is the essence of a great Ducati Multistrada? <laughs> you, you've, you've probably heard this many times, but the Multistrada is, is a bike when I, I just look at it and I think if I bought that bike and never ridden it, I'd still be happy. I'd be happy with it <laughs> in my living room and, you know, as I'm watching TV, just stroking it. It is beautiful. There's... I always say to people, there's not one part on that bike that I think has come out of a spare parts carton in the, in the factory. Everything seems to be designed by an Italian artisan who stays up for about, I don't know, three nights on the trot, burning candles and just just forging a little a little crease on a, you know on, on the tank or something. It's just beautifully designed, and it all comes together perfectly in my eye. You know, and that beauty is in the eye of the, eye of the beholder. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gone on that Italian bike. It's great. Oh, it's great to know that you spend your weekend stroking your Multistrada <laughs> when you're not riding Can't it. think of anything else better to do, James. So, Alan, what's it been like riding 170 brake horsepower of Testa Stressor engine on the way to work through the well quite congested streets of Stratford upon Avon. It's you know, here's the thing, you you think of that power and you think of, you know, the V four and so on and so on. And um uh but it's like any bike. You know, it's as gentle as you want it to be. Um it's quite it's quite high being, you know, an adventure bike, but fortunately I'm six foot two and I'm quite comfortable on it. But it's it's spot on. I've loved it. I've loved every part. And you know, to come back to the stroking thing as well, I can I can stroke it when I'm in work as well if I ride it to work. So I double enjoyment. But you know, is that are there better bikes for urban commuting? Of course there are. You know, um jeez, uh, you know, anything that's smaller and lighter and nippier is better in an urban environment. But, you know, uh I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't want to commute on the, the multi-strider. And that, for me, is the key. Yeah, and in between you stroking and riding it, I have managed to jump on it a, a few occasions this year. Uh, and, and that throttle response is just nice and smooth, isn't it? It's great it for low-speed manoeuvring on such a big bike. It's, it's nowhere near as... Well, it, it can be. If you, if you open that throttle, yes, it, the, the power is, is, is amazingly stimulating. But it's as gentle as you want it to be. And... I'm quite happy tootling through town 
at under 30 mile an hour speeds on that as I am doing faster speeds on any roads and motorways. It, it's, it, it's so comfortable as well. It really is so comfortable and there's no juddering, there's no flat spots on it, there, there's no hunting and shunting either. It, it's just, the fuel in it is great for these low speeds. So yeah, I'm more than happy. Yeah, and call me vain, but I always enjoy the looks I get when I'm on the multi as I'm cruising through town or even parking up. It's a, a bike that just garners a lot of attention, isn't it? Everybody looks at it and you, you can see love and desire in their <laughs> eyes. Chase. See it in yours. And I, and, I am gonna, <laughs> and I am gonna call you vain. But um, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great bike. It's a fantastic bike to look at. And the more you look at it, the more detail you see. And you know, I'm still looking at that bike every day after 10 years. And still finding little things every day where I think, I didn't notice that, but isn't that lovely? You know, I better stop here. I better, I'm, I'm giving it too much of an endorsement here in a way, but no, I, lo I, I think it looks great. And coming back to the commuter element, why not? Why not? Love it. It's going to make you feel happy when you arrive at work. <laughs> I can imagine arriving home on a Friday evening, you've got a gleaming Multistrada in your garage. Surely there's no better inspiration for heading off for the weekend. You're right there, James. It's um, the fact that the Multistrada makes me want to ride more. And I think, you know, it's it sort of all through my uh, adult life. I think any bike that's, wanted, that's helped me to ride more and I've wanted to ride more has been a great bike. The best buys I've ever made with bikes are the ones where I think, I can't wait to get out on that bike. And again, the Multistrada does it, and it's a number of reasons. You, you take sort of week, a long weekend tour now. Uh, it's, it's comfortable. It's seriously comfortable. The, the holy trinity of hands, backside, and feet are perfect for me. Uh, and speaking to other people of different shapes and sizes who've been on it, they've said similar as well. So it's a really comfortable bike to ride. It's, its performance is it's as blistering as you want it. It's, uh, but it's also, the handling is superb. Uh, but also just tootling around. I'm at, I'm at that age now, and of that disposition, where I actually like to see the, um, the terrain I'm going through rather than just zip through it. And the multi does that perfectly as well. So, you know, for, I look forward to my weekends with this bike. I go into the garage on Friday night and I go, let's go. And off we go. <laughs> and I'm back on Sundays and I've, and I've just had a great time. And isn't that, here's another thing. Uh, it's over the last 10 years of using Multistrandes, never once have I been let down by them. No. So, no. You know, we, we're talking a reliable bike here as well. So as a weekend tourer, uh, I've also taken my son uh, touring a couple of weekends as well. Not Bryn. It was a bit. It was a bit of an eighteen stone. A lad on the back, stone. isn't he? Yeah. I've also got one who's um, more like the thirteen stone, and taking him on the back with me, it's it's you wouldn't even know he's on the back. You know, it's uh, the power you've got, the size of the bike, the uh, it's it's great. It's it's you know, from a rider's perspective, I'm still riding solo, even though I've got one of my best buddies on the back with me to have a great time with later. So it was a weekend tour. Uh, you know, it's it's an eight nine eight or nine out of ten. That's how high I rate it. So, Alan, the bike we have came fitted with Ducati's luggage, side cases, and a top box. Um, have you found it in in everyday use? Spot on. You know, speaking personally, I prefer metal boxes primarily. I think they look better on an adventure bike. But the Ducati plastic ones, they they're big enough for every need I've had. They attach and detach from the bike easy simple um the if i do have one gripe and it is a little bit of a gripe the top box oh the way it sits on the bike it's a bit it's a it dis detracts from the looks it's a bit of a car <laughs> carbuncle yeah. as prince charles or king charles would say yep. now it's a bit of a carbuncle on a beautiful machine but it's it serves purpose and i can put up with it um but i take the top box off as much as possible because it spoils the looks yeah wow <laughs> there we go. So the Multistrada that you've been riding, 
Uh, I'm right in thinking it came equipped with Pirelli Scorpion Rally tyres, which is a 50-50 rubber. Yeah. Um, it had um, engine guards, quite a substantial bash plate, a stubby little screen so you could see the trailer heads. Um, <laughs> but it's still a bike worth upwards of twenty thousand pounds. You know, how did it feel taking something that beautiful and, and that pricey off road? Well, this the the V4. Uh, I have taken it off road, but it's been more on sort of forestry trails. Nothing technical. So a bit of dirt, bit of dust, a little bit of water splashing, this, that, and the other, but nothing technical. And I've still been terrified. <laughs> you know, absolutely. You, you know, I just look at that back and I think oh, it's going to cost ten grand if I just drop it in the car park or something. But it probably wouldn't. But uh, I have got a little bit of a green lane story for you. James. A couple of years ago when I had the, the Multistrada Enduro, I was sitting in the office and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and do the Strata Florida in mid wheels. So I just got up, said bye to everyone, and went over to mid wheels with the, um, the Multistrada. And if you know anything about Green Lanes, the Strata Florida is, it, you know, it takes out 250 trail bikes. It's notorious for the it's, water crossings, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And with a 20-odd grand bike, I, I'm not sure how many water crossings, but it's in double figures yeah. and deep. Yeah, you yeah. know, the chances of you coming off on a water crossing are very, very high. Chances of you coming across multiple times, coming off multiple times in a water <laughs> crossing are very, very high. So I got to the start of the Strata Florida. I was on my own. I'm the only one up here. I haven't seen anybody else. It was the middle of summer, so the water levels were down as much as they could. But I was on my own, and I thought, do I do it? Don't I do it? And I thought, yes, I'm here. I've ridden 120 miles to get here. Just do you it. Can't turn Just around. do Come it. <laughs> and it was like 29 degrees. It was seriously hot. Beautiful, beautiful countryside. And off I went down the strand of Florida on the Multistrada. And I must say, it was, it was, it was harder work than a, say, a 250 KTM. Yeah. Much harder work than that. But, geez, I enjoyed it. It did test me. It tested my riding skills. The water was at least a couple of feet deep in some parts. Uh, there was mud. There's rock steps. That, you know, if you've done the Strata Florida, you'll know what I'm saying. But I'd done it on a Multistrada. Didn't come off once. Touch wood. And, you know, got to the end. The, the bike performed brilliantly. I had to be a bit bolder on certain sections than I would probably like to. Yeah. In other words, to get over rock steps, I had to give it a bit more than I would than I felt comfortable with. But the bike done it. So, as an off-roader, can it do it? The answer is yes. It is, it is yes. But these are big bikes. You know, these are big bikes. You've got to be committed. You've got to have some experience to do something like the Strata Florida. And preferably do it on somebody else's bike as yeah. well, because yeah. if you do get that uh, immersion in one of the streams, it is it, it, just lifting the damn thing up and getting it out is going to be tough. So I would say do it on somebody else's bike and take some mates with you. Don't <laughs> don't do it like I done it. That's it. And that was the twelve sixty enduro, which if I remember rightly, that was actually a, a bigger machine than the current V four, which is a little more compact, isn't it? And I um because I took the V four. Last year, we had it for a couple of weeks yeah. uh, to Thetford Forest in East oh, Anglia nice. yeah. and then uh, rode up the Pedder's Way. So not quite as hardcore as the Strata Florida. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there certainly weren't any water crossings. But, you know, on some of the, the sand in Thetford and, and the um, the kind of, you know, very rutted Pedder's Way leading up towards yeah, Kings yeah. Lynn. What I was surprised about, uh, kind of, it, it, it didn't want, it didn't get out of control easily. It, it was quite happy kind of bimbling along the middle of a rutted lane, quite well balanced. You know, it wasn't desperately searching to go faster or desperately wanting to get out of control. It was, it was a very controlled bike off-road. Like we say, you've done the Perez way. Yeah. I've done the Strata Florida on it. There's, there's no better endorsement of that bike going off-road than what we've just said. It's capable of doing it. Um, but as I always say, when you've got a bike that big, that heavy, uh, you've got to have, you've got to be a confident yeah. rider yourself. You know, I, I wouldn't go take, I wouldn't go buying a multi out, to, you know, out of the showroom, not and not having ridden off road before, and then go on the Pedas way or yeah. the Strata Florida. It's you've you've got to, you've got to be experienced and you've got to be comfortable and confident.
So Adam, picture this. It's Friday today. You're finishing at lunchtime. You're shooting down to the south coast to catch a ferry across to France, hooning down France for a couple of days uh, to the Swiss and the Italian Alps for, uh, for a week or two playing in the mountains. Uh, pretty good picture. Is the Multistrada V4S a bike that you'd want to take or you would choose to take on such a journey? Uh, I think what, the way you've described that, James, if, if I actually went on that trip with the V4, I don't think I'd come back. I think that, <laughs> I think that would be the weeks. it'd be the end of ABR. Yeah. There would be no more ABR. I'd, you'd, you'd come down in twenty years' time or thirty years' time, and there'd be this old guy up the mountain with the big grey beard, <laughs> sort of sitting there with a stroke, stroke in his multi strata. Yeah. <laughs> now it's I've been you know I've been there, done it quite a number of times over the years on on multi stratas. In fact. You'll know the balcony roads in the Vacourse. Yep. First time I ever done those was on the Multistrada. And to get down there, I went down with Bryn, who was on, um, I think he was on uh, 1000XR at the time. So it was a good comparison between sort of the sportier end of adventure bikes. And we, had, we wanted to get down to the Vacourse to sort of spend all our time there. So we had a blast down from uh, through France on the motorways. And, you know, as I've said previous, I, for me, and I'm no doubt for lots of other people, the Multistrand is an incredibly, incredibly comfortable bike. Yeah. Um, so the motorway element of it was was superb. You know, I was comfortable, bags of power, bags of speed, loved that. But then down in the Vacours, what a bike to have. Yeah. Doing those Alpine bends and just and just discovering, exploring the Alps and, and like I say, those balcony roads. Absolutely loved it. So I've got... I've got great memories uh, of tours I've done on the Multistrada, and I think you know if you if you have a great time on a bike, it sort of raises the level of uh, what you think of the bike as well. So me and the Multi have had some great times, and I it's it's a brilliant continental tour. You know, if 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 I'm being honest here, there's one other bike I've ridden recently which I would is probably better for that, and that's the RT. Yeah, and uh, but you've got to have no aspirations of going off road on the RT. That's a. Um, but when it comes to the other thing is down the Vicors as well. We did find a few old military roads and so on, which I wouldn't have done on the RT. Yeah, it gives you the but option. It was doesn't brilliant it? exploring them on the on the multi. So, yeah, as a continental tourer, it uh, it's great on motorways. It's superb on alpine roads, and. If you do fancy doing a few of the off-road military roads or or going down that little lane there, mm. it's 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 more than up for the job for that as well. Yeah. So it's an it scores highly again as a continental tour. Yeah, and it's got you know it's got the power. Is it 170 brake horsepower? It's 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 got the comfort, which is one of the things I like about this new version of the Multistrada, which they seem to have made it a little bit the seating position is a little bit more laid back. It's a little bit more upright. More like the 1260 Enduro compared to the previous standard bike I found, which was on, as you said, the slightly sportier side of adventure biking. Yes, yeah. I would say you're, you're right in that. It's it's slightly more laid back, yeah. but it is it's perfect for me. Yeah, it is perfect. And uh, as adventure bikes go, I'm I'm trying to think now. You know, there's there's quite a few comfortable bikes out there, but none more comfortable than multi strata. So if you're thinking of doing long miles. It's 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 a great bike to have. Yeah, heated grips, cruise control. One thing I look at on that bike though, and I think oh, I'm not sure about cruising down a French toll road in a in a thunderstorm, is that screen though. The screen could be a bit higher and could oh. be a bit wider. Um, you know, I'm getting a little bit of helmet uh, blast, and I'm I'm getting it on the shoulders a bit as well, and. Uh, you know, if, we t if we're talking about things I'd like to change, in my perfect world, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have a bigger screen or a more protective screen, should I say. Uh, but also, um, and this would apply to sort of long continental touring as well, I wish they'd made it with the shaft drive. Yeah. Because it's, it's another thing, you know, sort of 30 years ago, I could strip a gearbox at the side of the road <laughs> with, um, with a toothpick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, these days, the only tools I carry with me are my mobile phone and my card. You know, I don't want oil, and uh, and tools in the pannier 
you know it's if i'm ta- if i'm taking uh if i'm taking a partner with me you know i don't want to sort of say right we're, we're stopping for oil change or you know to adjust the chain and oil the chain and so on i don't want any of that so what i'm coming down to is a long way of saying i wish they'd make it with a shaft drive yep you know i really do i want the i want as little maintenance as possible I, i'm like I say, I'm of an age and a disposition now where I just want to enjoy the ride in comfort. And I don't want to think about, oh, damn, I've got to adjust the, the yeah. chain tomorrow morning or something. So, yeah, multi strata with a taller screen and a shaft drive would be you know, almost my perfect bike. Almost, almost. I know we were chatting the other day, actually, about um, about the multi, uh, and you were talking about the range, and it's it's got a relatively healthy 22-litre fuel tank. That's, you know, but it is a you know relatively thirsty bike. It's got a big engine, um, which could be why Ducati are coming out with the big 30-litre fuel tank version next year, aren't they? Would, would that suit your needs, do you think, better? I, th- I think they needed to come out with the bigger tank, to be honest, and uh, that was highlighted perfectly couple of weeks ago when four of us from the ABR office we went over to Aberystwyth for uh, fish and chips you know the other guys were all on big adventure bikes and when I was popping you know when I was sort of signaling we got to stop for fuel they still had a hundred range yeah in their tank so the, the multi strata was 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 standing out for having the lowest range by far yeah it is a thirsty bike and it does need a bigger tank and thankfully they've come out with that big so um, that's, a, that's a positive. I know you haven't ridden the Multistrada around the world. You've been running Adventure Rise for the past six or eight months, however long we've had the bike. But I do know that you, you have ridden extensively across the globe throughout the years. Um, so from that experience, how do you think the Multistrada V4S you know, would, would suit your round-the-world trip of a lifetime? I can't think of any reason why not to take it, James. I'm... I'm I'm just being so positive about this bike. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's lots of other bikes I'd like to take as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it means we're talking about the, the Multistrada. You know, I've I've ridden across the, let's just say, the Paracas Desert in Peru. Um, I've ridden up the Skelton Coast in Namibia and through all the, most countries in Africa as well. And I'm not talking tarmac, I'm talking dirt roads, I'm talking gravel tracks, I'm talking desert and so on. And... You know, with my experience with this, I'd have no problem taking the harder road with this Multistrada. Um, you know, I wouldn't like I wouldn't like to be solo in a desert trying to dig the damn thing out yeah. of, of something. <laughs> That'd be my but, job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I can't think of any sort of tour I've done where I wouldn't have been happy to take the Multistrada. Uh, but again, it comes back to it's a big bike. It's a big bike. It's a heavy bike. Uh, you've got to be a confident rider. You've got to be, you've got to be experienced off road riding to get the best out of it. But if you're riding around the world, there it's going to come a point on that trip when you're going to be experienced anyway. Yeah. But um, but let's not forget, you can ride around the world now without without going off road. Yeah. You know, uh, or at the very least, do some gravel graded tracks. And I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't take the multi strider. Um, I might. Depending on the time and what I what my inclination was and what uh, what ideas I had to do on round the world things, I might take a smaller bike. Depending on that, but if I was just going round for the experience, why not? Yeah, why and, not? and you know, some people will be saying now, "Oh, electronics! It's a bike with electronics. You can't take that around the world." But as you mentioned earlier, I don't. We've we've had multistrades for years here. They've we've never. <laughs> They've never broken down in terms of, have they? It's 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 a it's actually a pretty reliable machine. Uh, in our experience, yeah, you know, yeah. in our experience, we've been riding them for about ten years yeah. without a break, and we've we've not had a problem on that. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there now yeah, who's going to yeah. say, yeah, we've had a problem on, yeah. and everybody remembers the days when Ducati used to have problems with the yeah, electrics, yeah. but they are long gone. You know, uh, Ducati and electrics are great now. You know, it's the same as any bike now. It's uh, the the technology is, and I know there are a lot of guys out there um, that look back at, at the old days in the seventies when you know you had to kickstart the thing and you had to, you had to push it most of the time. Yeah. But uh, you know, and look back fondly on those days that you know you could you could genuinely fix just about any problem, and I could, and I'm I, I'm not a technician or anything. 
Um, that's the problem as I see it now. If you do have a problem, you're highly unlikely to be able to yeah. fix it. But they rarely have problems. And, you know, so what? What if you do it? You know, you're, you're on a round-the-world trip. What if you have a problem? It's, it's, it's just something to, to deal with, isn't it? You know, it's not the so end of the world. Yeah. yeah. They, you know, it's just something to deal with. And it's in those times of adversity do the best memories and stories inevitably grow out of. Yep. You know, so encourage you by direct. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. No, we won't it do badly. We won't do, <laughs> no, we won't do that. But, you know, look, if you, if you go around the world and you break down, so what? Deal with it. So, Alan, you mentioned earlier that you've taken your son, Gabe, on the back of the Multistrada. You know, I always love getting emails from ABR readers who talk about how they got into biking and, and usually it's being inspired by their father so you know yeah, yeah. how does it feel to to actually be able to enjoy passing on your love of biking to your son on the Multistrada and how's it felt over the past year doing that I can't think of a better weekend away really or, yeah. or, or a day out and for me and Gabe to um, uh Go on the multi and uh, you know he's he's got a he's got, he's got his own ideas of what a good day out is. We have to stop <laughs> somewhere and have a look at a bit of Lego, and you know there's this street food place down in Oxford which he loves. So and I love it as well to see him yeah. enjoying biking and stuff like that. But to come, you know, he loves the multi uh, To put this in perspective, he's thirteen. Yeah, um, and he's, he's, he's a, quite a tall 13, he, isn't he? He's, you know, he's, he's a rugby yeah. player in 13, yeah. and uh, we call him the bowling ball. You just give him, <laughs> I'll say yeah. no more. But uh, So he's a big lad for 13, and um, but what uh, first thing is, you, you I, I don't even know he's on the back. Yeah, You know, it's the seat in position is enough, you know, gives him enough room to sit comfortably without sort of uh, being overbearing on me. The position of the panniers as well is is fine for him. You know, we, they're not obstructing his leg or digging into his leg. And he just sits there and we put a little cushion on the back of the top box and he sits there and he's, he just has a great time. And he does love the, the power and speed of the multi yeah. as well. That does, as any 13-year-old lad would, not that I break speed limits, I wouldn't think of doing anything dangerous with Gabe on the back. But... um. Performance-wise, you wouldn't know you've got anybody on the back. You know that power, that engine, and the power from that engine is. is it, I could be towing, uh, you know, I could be towing the the Ford Ranger truck behind us as well, and I probably wouldn't even <laughs> notice that. It's it's ju it's just got bags of power, and for carrying a pillion, you're not going to lose anything there. The handling, um, geez, you know, it's a, it's another. It's another thing where I look at and I sort of think, I'm struggling to think of any ride we've been out where I've thought, mm. I wish he wasn't on the yeah. back at that point in time. But it, it's, I've never had any of those. Whatever we've done, the bike has handled it superbly. Uh, so as a two-up tourer, again, it's, it's going to score very high. Yeah. I can't really fault it in that. And, you know, I've had some of the best days of my bike in life taking uh, a pillion passenger on the back of a multi. Um, Jeez, Ducati ought to pay me for this, shouldn't There we go. Yeah, no, I promise they're not. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. But I know I, I, I ride a lot to up these days with my wife. And surprise you, you know, some people will be like, oh, no, you've got to take the old ball and chain on a bike tour. But actually, I, I love sharing my love of bikes with her. She doesn't ride, but we, we go abroad a lot. Uh, and there's, you know, there's some bikes I talk about us going for a ride on and she's lukewarm about. And there's yeah. other bikes that she'll smile and go, yeah, I'm in. And the Multistrada is one of those. As you mentioned, because of the room, because of the, the, the sensibly placed foot pegs, I mean, she's, you know, comfortable, but can move around. Yeah, yeah. But as a rider, what I love about it is that that front end doesn't go light when no. you've got someone on the back. And, and you know, Karina's got a three in her, her age, but she's not 13. You know, she's, she's uh, uh, I'm not, I'm going to stop there. But having, <laughs> having, you know, a passenger and some luggage on the back, that, that semi-automatic suspension on the Multistrada just handles it so well, doesn't it? Like, I, I, some Big adventure bikes do go a little light up they front, do. don't they? But the multi they do. doesn't. I've had, um, you know, my other son, Bryn, who's, who's, who's a big lad. He's another big lad. <laughs> he um, 
you know, Bryn, Bryn is around the, I think he's around about the 18 stone mark, isn't he? And Another rugby player. He's another rugby <laughs> yeah. player. Um, so, but I've had him on the back of the multi strata <laughs> as well. I would love to have seen that. And whilst... <laughs> Whilst there wasn't so much room on there, no. <laughs> the the front end again wasn't particularly going light. But then I've taken Bryn on the back of um, some other very well known big uh, adventure bikes, and yeah, it's been quite scary. It's been you know that front end has been skimming the surface rather than gripping the surface. So um, full marks, full marks for that. And uh, that suspension is really that level in suspension is working there. It is good because it can be done automatically, can't it? But yes. you've also got a setting on the uh, on the TFT screen where it's got one helmet, two helmets, uh, two helmets and luggage, and it's you know uh, I don't know you know the luddites out there probably won't like the fact that it's more electronics, but it's just so handy being able to just flick between each mode, you know, jump on the bike and go on a Sunday, isn't it? Rather than faffing around with preload and adjusting compression and whatnot. James, I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know, I. I'm, I just want to press a button and things work. <laughs> and that happens on the multi swan and, and coming on to the, uh, you know, the technology, there's, there's a couple of other things which I, I've got to mention. Mm. One, of, one of them is, is very particular to me. Um, as you know, I have, I've only got one eye. My right eye doesn't work. You yep. know, I, that makes no difference. Um, it's, a, it's a glass eye, you know, so it's never going to work. <laughs> And if you think about it, for riding in Britain, I can't see that the look every biker has to do when you're overtaking, yeah. when you're turning, I can't do it. So And you're still I, with us, which is I'm, good. <laughs> yes. So, you know, so it, it's been difficult for me to do that. It's great on the continent. Because on when when I ride overseas, it's perfect. I can I can do my safety checks, but riding in the UK, it's it's almost impossible for me to get enough peripheral vision to do that. So I rely massively on mirrors, and the multi strata, the technology in the multi strata now includes the warning light that there's something on your side. Now I can't see my hand there, you know I haven't got that peripheral vision. I'll yeah. tell you when I can see my hand. There you go. There you go. I can see my hand now. Now, if there's a car on that side, I can't see it. But on the Multistrada, I know it's there because that light comes on, and it's been foolproof so far. And, you know, with my, with my situation, that's been something I've particularly taken notice of, and it does, it works every time. It's been 100%, yeah. you know. And what an aid for, for me it is. Yeah. The um, the other thing which um, I think is superb is and it ties in with that because that's that that warning light is done on a, a radar sensor, and the Ducati has also got the uh, you know the adjustable cruise control, mm. and uh, I just think that's brilliant, especially on you know it doesn't really matter so much on if you're continental cruising because there's nobody else on the French motorways yeah. and stuff like that. It's just but on our roads, having that automatic adjustable cruise control that just does it without you doing it makes cruise control usable. Yeah. Because without it in the UK, there's so many other vehicles on the road that, you know, there's only about 10 metres of space yeah. somewhere on the... I never used to bother, to be honest with you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I find myself using that. And it is, again, it's been, it's been faultless, you know. Riding a bike and relying one hundred percent on it, I don't think I'd ever do that. I'm no. all, you know, it doesn't make me think of other things and you know, relying it one hundred percent. But it is has been faultless, and I find that superb. Also, it's a, you know, I find I'm using adjustable cruise control in the car to save my license. It's too easy to sp to speed these days as well. Yeah, yeah. and putting that on in uh, on on the Ducati as well. It's another thing which, uh, you know, especially with that 170 brake horsepower, it's another thing which helps keep your license should you need to. All in all, there's two bits of technology which, uh, brilliant. I know, when I when Absolutely I spotted brilliant. they were going to be on the bike, I was a little bit guilty of thinking, oh, you know, it's a bit of a gimmick, who needs them? I have to admit, when I rode the bike, and, you know, someone who has got full peripheral vision, 
those blind spot indicators light up before I would do a shoulder check. They, sure, they give you that warning. And they, what I like is they, they light up when I wouldn't be thinking of doing them one anyway. Yeah. So I'm cruising, I don't know, cruising along the slow lane or in the middle lane. And just knowing that there's a car approaching is so handy, just in case something goes wrong in Absolutely. front of you in a split second. And you, you know there's something there. And I, I, honestly, it's a, one of the best pieces of tech, I think, to appear on motorbikes in a long time. I, I like actually as well, as I'm going along, seeing them on cars. So as I'm approaching a car, I always keep an eye out for the little flash on the car's wing mirror. Because yeah. I know that the, the driver, he may not, or she may not have seen it, but it, it's, a ch you know, there's a chance that they probably have. And it's just little pieces of tech like that, I think really, are really aid safety, which can only be a good thing. It, it's, yeah. It, it is a great, it's, it's not a good thing, it's a great yeah. thing. And uh, the other thing I can say is whenever, if you haven't ridden, you know, people who, who have not been out riding with before, I always say to him, look, if, we, if we're on a single track lane or something like that, do not ever, <laughs> especially if we're on a green lane, do not ever overtake me on the right-hand side. Yeah. Because my peripheral vision is, is zero on the right-hand side. So, you know, I might come into you uh, uh, or cut in front of you just because of that, you know, because when you're riding off-road, it's, it's even more difficult to do that sort of thing. But no. <laughs> I don't need to do that. You can overtake me on the right hand side if you want now, Jess. It's all right. I'll know it's you're all, there. Hopefully. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Alan, yeah, I think, you know, it's clear we're, we're actually both huge fans of the Moist Driver, yes. aren't we? Um, and I don't think we've ever done a verdict that's been quite so positive, <laughs> in fact, but it is, it is a great machine. And I don't think if you bought one, you, you would be disappointed in any way with. with, with Something that not only is, for me, a, a, a really impressive motorcycle, but it just makes you feel so damn good to ride it and own it, doesn't it? Yes, without a doubt. It does for me. It does for me. Everything from that first, the first look of love, right the way through <laughs> to the, you know, right the way through to the, the whole riding experience uh, is, just, is just great. And like you say, there's a lot of good bikes out there. A hell of a lot of good bikes. I don't think anybody makes a bad bike now. But, you know, the Ducati is right there, right up the top. So that's my verdict. And that is the ABR verdict on the Ducati Multistrada V4S. So, Alan, before we go, I just wanted to say another big thank you to the folks at Lindstrands and Hal Varsens who have supported this video. Um, we've used their gear for years. If you'd like to find out more about the gear they produce, just look at the link below this video. And please do hit that subscribe button below. It only takes a second and it really does help us continue to make content for you. So, Alan, until the next time. Until the next time, James. Cheers, all.